Parents at a Wisconsin high school are outraged following reports of an 18-year-old transgender woman exposing herself to four freshman girls in the shower area of a locker room. This happened last month. We've got complete coverage. It begins now. Riley Gaines with live reaction in just a moment. But first to Garrett Tenney. He's live with this story. Garrett, what are parents saying about this? Yeah, Sandra, there's a lot of concern, not only over how this happened in the first place, but what the school district is doing to keep it from happening again. This was four freshman girls who went to rinse off in the shower after their swimming class last month at Sun Prairie East High School, just outside of Madison, Wisconsin. They were wearing their swimsuits, one of their attorneys tells us, when an 18-year-old biological male transgender student walked into the showers, told them, I'm trans, by the way, and then fully undressed, exposing their genitals to the four teenage girls. At a school board meeting this week, parents laid into the district for its response to the incident, or the lack thereof, while one student who spoke appeared to blame the four girls for the incident. I am asking you to keep male genitalia in the male locker room and female genitalia in the female locker room, or create a trans locker room. We cannot trample on the feelings of 14 year old girls, boys, transgender people constantly and saying, it, you know, it's the equitable thing to do is to screw over the group of girls because they get to look at a penis in the locker room. If you are worried about privacy in a locker room, I implore you to go into one of the stalls. My personal solution is not to look at other students genitals. The district hasn't given any clear answers as to what changes it's made to keep this from happening again, but says in a statement, the simple truth is that this incident should not have happened, but it did, and the district addressed it long before the recent publicity. An attorney representing one of the girls' families is blaming the Biden administration for incidents like this, pointing to the proposed changes to the definition of sex to include gender identity. Sandra? Garrett Tenney on that for us. Garrett, thank you. All right, let's bring in Riley Gaines, a 12-time NCAA All-American swimmer and the spokeswoman for the International Women's Forum. So, Riley, speak to the situation in the Sun Prairie School District in Wisconsin, because you had a similar experience when you were in a locker room with Leah Thomas. Um, as, 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 a biological, as a biological female, what is it like for you and a biological male that still has full genitalia undresses in front of you? I mean, it's traumatizing. It feels like betrayal. It feels like belittlement. Of course, it's awkward. It's embarrassing. It's uncomfortable. But trauma is the best word for this. Um, I, I just, it blows my mind. These are 14-year-old girls. Um, they should never have to be in a position where they're seeing male genitalia without giving their consent. Um, it, it, it's mind-blowing, and it's becoming more and more common. My situation, what we dealt with as Division I swimmers at that meet where we were forced to change in the locker room with Leah Thomas, um, that is becoming less and less unique. It's happening all across the country um, to girls and women of all ages, all sports, all divisions, and it's, it's a travesty, really. Riley, do you feel like you're getting anywhere with this? I mean, you have, you have elevated this conversation in this country. There is no doubt. I know you've gone on the record saying, hey, you were supposed to be in dental school at this point, but you have found your voice with this, and you feel like this is a moment where you need to speak up for all women in this country who feel like, you know, there are, there are people that are getting in the way of their own successes. Are you, do you feel like you're getting anywhere with this? You know, there are days, this, it's a day-by-day -day kind of feeling, um, but truthfully, I feel like the tides are turning. They have to, right? Um, last week, with the, the U.S. House of Representatives passing the SUBI bill, mm -hmm. that's great news for women and girls in sports. I, I can't say I'm overly confident about the future of, of this bill on the Senate side, but I can only hope and encourage Democrats, especially um, Democrat senators, to vote in favor of protecting women and girls in sports. Um, but I do feel like the general public, they're waking up to this. You saw those parents in that clip. You saw um, how they reacted to their daughters being in this position. I can only hope and imagine and pray that that is becoming more and more common. Um, parents, dads, moms, they don't want to see their daughters lose out on opportunities and, and be forced to undress in front of someone of the opposite sex in, in their locker room. Um, so I do think tides are turning. There have been some Sport, sports governing bodies who have done some good things, um, World Athletics, FINA. Um, so I'm appreciating the little steps, but I do believe the battle is nowhere near being won. Rilo, let me come back to Leah Thomas, if I could, because in a recent podcast, Leah was very critical of her UPenn teammates for supporting her 
transition, but being on the fence about her competition. Here's what she said. They're like, oh, we respect Leah as a woman, as a trans woman, whatever. We respect her identity. We just don't think it's fair. You can't really have that that sort of half support. They're using the guise uh, of feminism to sort of push transphobic uh, beliefs. What what do you say to that, Riley? Is it, is it possible to support a person's transition, but then at the same time say, wait a second, you're a six foot four inch biological male. I'm a five foot seven inch female. It's not fair for me to be competing against you, particularly given all of the work that I put in to do this while you were swimming in the male division. Absolutely, it's fair to say that. Um, what Thomas is doing in this podcast is simply gaslighting people into um, feeling like they're wrong for feeling uncomfortable in the locker room, feeling like um, they should be okay with stepping aside and smiling and allowing these men to take our spots on the podium, take our titles, take our scholarships, take away our opportunities. Um, and I, I've talked to several of Leah Thomas's teammates, one even just yesterday after watching this podcast, who informed me the gaslighting that Thomas was portraying in that video was what they dealt with all year last year. Um, she's informed me of some really okay. heartbreaking, awful stories that resulted in emotional blackmail by both Thomas and their university into trying to silence their voices, suppress okay. their voices, um, trying to make them feel guilty for, for, for wanting fair competition and safety in their sports. And now the, the word... Sorry, I was just going to say the word that comes to mind when watching this podcast is sheer entitlement and selfishness and an utter disregard towards women. And now we have this transgender woman running in the London Marathon as a woman who just a short period before that ran a different marathon as a man, beating out 14,000 people uh, into the London Marathon. Uh, we'll keep following all of this. Thank you, Riley, for joining us. Appreciate you joining us. Thank you. Thanks, Riley. Good to see you again. And that is Glenique Frank. Thank you, guys. Okay.